My first guest on City Extra today is one of those rare people who graduated from being a rather outrageous rock and roll star of the 60s to become one of the world's most popular and talented entertainers. He made his first record called Rock with the Cavemen way back in September 1956. But since then he's starred in a string of successful films and shows culminating in the lavish London Palladium production of the musical Hans Anderson, which opens tonight at the city's Empire Theatre. He was born in Bermondsey in South London as Thomas Hicks, but today he's better known the world over as Tommy Steel. Tommy, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good Thank you. Sorry about the bad weather. You didn't see any rainbows on your way over, did you? Uh, no, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Liverpool will always be at the end of it. It is for me. It is a very lucky city for me. Is it? Oh yes. Um, I spent some time here as a seaman uh, before um, I was relegated to Southampton, and I've always enjoyed myself here. But th- through my show business career, Liverpool has been sort of milestones. Mm. It's remarkable. You think I've been I've been here lots of times, but I haven't. I've been here three times, and each time I came, it was something lucky for me. First time was in '57. I did a show at the uh, Royal Court called um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, mm. and I remember I was terrified that I was going to do a stage show with with actors and singers and dancers, and, and I was going to leave me group behind the Steel Men just for this pantomime season. And I met this outrageous director called Freddie Carpenter from Australia. He spoke very much like that, and um, I was so frightened that I learnt the script long before rehearsal. And I turned up on the first day of rehearsal here in Liverpool, first time in Liverpool mm-hmm. as a non-seaman. And uh, he was flabbergasted that I knew all the words before we started. And so he said, well, as we, you, you know, everyone is going to be learning their words over the next few days, you might as well go and learn a dance routine. And I said, but um, I don't know nothing about dancing. He said, listen, you've got three or four days. That's the man over there who's called a choreographer. Tell him that you've got nothing to do for the next four days and tell him to teach you to dance. And that what started me off. And then I came here again in, I think, 60, in a show called Humpty Dumpty. And one night in the middle of January, um, two fellas came up called Beverly Cross and David Hanneker. And we went to a place called The Cavern, which was then sort of a nightclub, mm-hmm. you know, with, with music downstairs. And um, they played me on the only piano available in Liverpool at 3 o'clock in the morning, which was in The Cavern. They played me a, the score from a show they'd just written called Kips. And by about 7 o'clock in the morning, I said that I'd do it, and we'd changed the name from Kips to one of the nicest songs in the show called Half a Sixpence. And I opened in it no. the following month, the following year. So it's been a terribly lu- lucky thing. And, and between those two things, if I'm not going on too much, I came here for a, two weeks with a, a, um, an American show called Freddie Bell and the Bell Boys, where we did the big, uh, the first big rock show that's ever been in, in England at that time. We went to London with it eventually, but we came to Liverpool for the first performance. Now, the show's been a great success, hasn't it, Hans Anderson? Yeah, oh, yes. yes. Where have you been so far? Because it's a tour, isn't it? Do you mean just in this tour? Mm. Uh, this is our second date. We were at Oxford for a month. Now we're here for two weeks. And then we go on to uh, Coventry, then Leeds, then Southampton. And of course, the show was in in London at the Palladium. Yeah, the Palladium, yeah. It's the, it's the same production. It's it's a, a and it's a. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but it's a tremendously tremendous company. It's 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 far more exuberant and vigorous than than any company that's ever played it. And this is the third company to play it. The fourth company to mm. play the, the the show. We'll come back to, to Hans Anderson just just a moment. Um, you started your career as a pantry boy on an ocean liner, didn't the you? The Scythia, out of Liverpool. Really? Yeah, yeah the RMS Scythia, Cunard line, yeah. And what were you doing? I was a pantry boy. I spent most of the time being sick, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but how, how did you go, how did you get from pantry boy to... The gym instructor to singer and all that. Well, yeah. uh, just through the auspices of the Cunard line and uh, Fernie's with uh, the New Zealand Shipping Company, and I was there for four years as a pantry boy, going into a commie waiter, then becoming um, uh, a gymnasium instructor, and that's how I ended up as a gym instructor on the Mauritania. He used to do impersonations of, of Norman Wisdom for the yeah, ship's concerts. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I used to sing mostly all all sort of folk. Liverpool type songs as a matter of things, things like Maggie May and all that and I was taught to play guitar by a Liverpudlian or a fellow that I called Scouse but then in those days just about 500 fellows on the ship 400 of them were Scouse 
and the others were mush, which were for <laughs> Southampton. So there was always Liverpool, Liverpudlians and, and Southampton fellas. And uh, it was nearly always the Liverpool boys that you'd find the best guitarists mm. out of, real good guitar players, really fantastic. Did you always want to be a singer? Yeah, I, no, I, I, no, I didn't. It, again, chance. Um, I was listening to a, a radio program in Bermuda once. Uh, I'm sorry to place drop. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in Bermuda on board ship and I was listening to a, a fella called Red Foley, a country singer, was singing a song about the life of Hank Williams. Uh, I'd never heard of Hank, of Red Foley. I definitely didn't hear of Hank Williams. But I was taken by the lyrics of the song, thinking that if someone could take the trouble to sit down and write and sing a song about a man, what kind of a fellow must this man have been? And so I started to ask a few questions around the ship and nobody knew much about this fellow called Hank Williams. And then I gradually found out that he was another country singer who died in 52, I think it was, uh, from an overdose of heroin, which again was quite new to me, you know. And I couldn't imagine this fellow being on a horse, riding with the sun to the saddle through the pines and being chased by Apaches and giving himself injections of heroin en route. You know, the, the, the whole idea of it seemed a bit sort of bizarre. And so I started to get some writings on the man and found that he was the most unbelievably prolific songwriter. Wrote things like Cheat and Heart and Jambalaya and all oh, marvellous, wonderful songs. And so I, I read more and eventually came to know his songs and couldn't find anybody that could play them on the ship that could accompany me. You'd go to the fella playing the piano downstairs, he could play Hard-Hearted Anna or, <laughs> you know, Roll Out the Barrel, but he couldn't play Cheat and Heart, for instance, or Collider. So I went to this fella that was on the ship, a, a scouser, and I said to him, um, is there any chance of teaching me to play these songs? So he said, well, you, you've got to learn chord symbols and, and chord progressions, which, again, totally new to mm. me. But I just purely wanted to be able to mm. sing the songs. I didn't want to play guitar. And he taught me the chords. And uh, probably about two years after that, I'd left the sea, uh, knowing all Hank Williams' songs and just about everybody else's by that time. I was packed with brand-new songs that I'd discovered in america being at, at sea mm. and arrived on the shores of england with things like hound dog uh, blue suede shoes heartbreak hotel which nobody had ever heard of before and sung them in coffee bars and thereby got discovered and by coincidence there's just been a, a show in in liverpool as a tribute to hank williams it was on the every month oh, i saw it i saw Did it you? in london yes yeah. Yes, that's good. It, it was... Uh, Carl Chase, wasn't that's it? That's right, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. OK, let's take a little break there, Tommy, for some music. We'll chat again in just a moment. From Hans Anderson, this is a song called No Two People. No two people have ever been so in love Been so in love Been so in love No two people have ever been so in love As my lovey does Never before and never again could never anything be for and never again. Beautiful me. No two people have ever been so in love. 